Hej, jag heter Janne Wallin och är heroinist som nu går i ett metadonprogram här i Stockholm. I'm still a user and I, I, I have a life. And in the evenings, I'm, I work as a projectionist at a, at a, um, at a cinema here in town. When I'm on methadone, I, I, I'm a drug user. The, the, the difference is that I'm not... Uh, I'm not uh, I, I get my drugs the legal way. And I don't have to sort of do criminal acts in order to, to, to get the drug. I had a car accident in 1984, a rather severe car accident. I was stuck in the car, you know, with the, with the engine up to my stomach and my face out through the window. And I was in pain when I woke up at the intensive care. And uh, severe pain. And then I got to the morphine for the first time as a painkiller. I was quite depressed, you know, and uh, when I got the morphine, you know, it was like all troubles just disappeared. And it was a very nice feeling, all the anxiety disappeared, everything disappeared. It was a kind of a positive new thing, and I think that has been in the back of my head ever since. And then later on in life, and I had another trauma, more of a uh, kind of a severe depression and shit like that with the... Uh, Suicide thing, suicidal thinking and stuff like that. I really didn't want to live. Then this came up in the back of my head. I thought maybe I should try out the morphine again. I did, and I sort of made it through. When the addiction got such a hold of me uh, that I started to do things which is normally not in my nature to do. I stole from my kids to 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 get money. Uh, I stole from my family, I stole my wife's wedding ring, you know, porn, she took it to a pawn shop because I was so terrified of uh, going cold turkey, you know, completely terrified of it. I started up with heroin in 1991 and ended up in jail for three years and, and so on. And, and when I went to the social services, they said, ah, we can't help you. You're not uh, down the drain enough. You have to do heroin for another four years and then you can come back and then we can help you. And then when I uh, got methadone 98, I, I saw how the doctors treated persons that had, uh, was, severely sick of hepatitis C and HIV because they relapsed and then they took the methadone away and throw them back on the street even if the doctor knew that you're gonna die in in a five month period they didn't care I got uh, to wait about six months before I came into treatment bad case you can die but long before you're able to enter I think substitution should be expanded even more, even though it is, has changed, uh, it's still restrictive and I have met people on methadone who have, have not been able to get it here in Sweden, so they will go to Copenhagen. In Stockholm, it's easier to get into the program compared to other places, like for instance Gothenburg, you have to wait one, two years to get into treatment, even though it's, it's I mean, decided that you should have it. What I mainly criticize in the Swedish methadone problem is the, the, the control, you know, the extreme control. There's always this uh, 
urine tests and if you're positive you will be punished, you will not get your take home doses. And at some clinics they do strip searches. You have to drop your trousers and maybe even your underwear and they will look over you for, for injection marks and if you have kind of a little wound they will clean it and look so it isn't an injection mark. And even if it isn't they can claim that it is. Bit. So they, they treat you like you're a little child, or that you're potentially dangerous, or uh, that you don't know what's best for you. You know, when you when you're a drug addict in Sweden, you're automatically discharged from from normal behavior, so to speak. You have you're you're always kind of stigmatized in some kind of way, often by by people's attitudes, and that's uh, especially in treatment. Yeah. Intravenous drug users are, of course, uh, vulnerable for, for blood-borne viruses because they uh, have the uh, most accessible route to get the virus by sharing needles, uh, uh, syringes and other paraphernalia like the filters, the spoons, the cookers, everything. In 1968, uh, there was a government uh, decision that they should uh, uh, try to uh, make it hard to get a hold of uh, needle and syringes. So they made a policy that uh, stated that you have to have needle and syringes on a uh, recipe or prescribed. This was to, to, to prevent the epidemic of intravenous drug use. And this was in 1968 and in 1979 they had a figure of intravenous drug users around 12,000 and now we're up to the double. So I don't know if that policy was su uh, successful. As far as the hepatitis C goes, it's uh kind of a hidden disease. I, I got it back in 2001, uh, I think it was, and I hadn't, I hadn't heard about it, you know, before. I didn't really know what it was. I uh, didn't know the difference between A, B and C, and I didn't know that it uh, could infect so easily, and uh, all the information came to me when, when it was too late. Uh, we recently did a, a prevalence study uh, in Stockholm where we tested 300 uh, intravenous drug users and the prevalence of uh, hepatitis C was 89 percent so uh, internationally that's that's quite a high figure one reason is that we uh, don't have needle syringe programs uh, but also it's a, a lack of knowledge among the users when it comes to HIV uh, I my, my fear is that the lack of a needle syringe program would render in an in a epidemic of HIV among intravenous drug users, which it actually, actually did uh, just uh, a couple of years ago, where you saw an increase of HIV among the intravenous drug users in Stockholm, but not in, in um, the south of Sweden, where we actually have two needle syringe programs. After many years, uh, a law has been passed saying that we could have needle exchange programs, but except for two cities in the south of Sweden, which had, had, had it on the experimental level on the long, for a long time, um, it has not been uh, implemented by the counties. They refuse to do it. We are not for it, uh, we, which of course was our natural instinct to be against it. Why should you help people using drugs? Um, you should help them not using drugs. When it comes to preventing HIV and, and uh, hepatitis C, uh, the needle exchange programs are quite good. And, and as I said, uh, um, the UN is you know, promoting this.